I had an old boss once that was uh, flying in Vietnam. That's how old he was. Uh, and he was just brand new into uh, Vietnam. And the um, flight engineer, the, the the maintenance guy on the helicopter, basically would take a sample of fuel and hand it to the pilot through the window. And uh, so the pilot could inspect the fuel and make sure that there was no contaminants and then hand it back and he would like throw it out or whatever, right? Well, he, my old boss, being new to the country, uh, basically it was a hot day in, in Vietnam and somebody handed him a little vial of clear liquid um, in a little glass mason jar container through the window and he thought it was, he thought it was water. And so he takes a big old swig of it, realizes what it is before he swallows it, spits it back into the cup, looks at it, hands it back with a straight face and says, that's good. The mechanic's eyes were as wide as saucers. When you take a fuel sample, don't drink the fuel sample. Don't taste the fuel sample. What you're looking for is for 100 low lead is that blue tint color and any uh, contaminants or, or water in the fuel itself. Fuel contamination is a serious concern in aviation, including in helicopters, like the Robinson R-22 and R-44. Contaminated fuel can lead to engine failure, which is why it's crucial to understand the types of fuel contamination, how it happens, and how to prevent it. First, let's talk about water contamination. Water is the most common contamination in aviation fuel. It can enter the fuel tanks through condensations or in leaks. Water in the fuel can cause the engine to run rough, misfire, or even stop completely. In cold conditions, water can freeze and block fuel lines. So how do you detect water? Water usually settles at the bottom of the fuel tank because it is heavier than fuel. During pre-flight checks, you can use a fuel sampler to check for water at the bottom of fuel tanks. Now let's talk about particulate contamination. This includes dirt, sand, rust, and other small particulates that can get into the fuel. Particulates can clog fuel filters and injectors, reducing engine performance or causing engine failure. Particles can often be seen as sediment in the fuel sample. If the fuel looks cloudy or if you see particles floating in it, there's most likely contamination. This one time my student went and pre-flighted the helicopter and he came back and in the 100 low lead uh, gas, which is like light blue in color, it was a bunch of like floating black things and it was just an amazing amount. I was just blown away by the amount of particulates in this thing. So I'm, he's like, hey, uh, this was in the fuel, it shows me it was all completely contaminated and I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Turns out there was the float. Um, in the fuel tank itself, there's a float that senses the uh, level of the gas in the engine and then sends that float information to the, the gas gauge. That float was this basically kind of a plastic foam thing and it just all of a sudden just completely uh, disintegrated and it just completely fell apart. And so this, uh, we had to end up draining the entire tank and replacing the float and rinsing the tank out and then filling it back up and then it was all fine but it was the weirdest thing because the the flight previous there was no particulates and this flight that we we're about to go on was the second flight of the day it was filled with particulates so always 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 uh pull a fuel sample from the helicopters now let's talk about microbial growth microbes can grow in the water that contaminates fuel especially in warmer climates these microbes form a slimy substance that can clog fuel filters and cause corrosion. Microbial contamination can lead to fuel system blockage and corrosion, which can damage the engine and fuel system. Microbial growth appears as a dark, slimy substance in the fuel or on the walls of the fuel tank. All right, folks, if you've made it this far without dozing off, very impressive. Tip of the cap. Now that you're officially a helicopter nerd like me, why not take the next step? Check out my online helicopter ground school at 3gheliprep.com. Trust me, it'll only get more exciting from here, or at least more useful.